and he works. Is that a zippy? Finish up buying in about four times a week, but and it's really nice. I'll so I'll go outside, set the ironing book ironing board up outside on the front, put the stereo on and stand there in my trunks and sunglasses. Do you remember that old idea that says the key to worker power is to own the means of production? Well, in the family, women certainly do own the means of production, as any woman on a labour ward will tell you. But does that give her power or just responsibility? Well, there is an assumption that children belong to their mothers more than their fathers. <laughs> <laughs> get ready. That's why mothers get custody of the children in eight out of ten divorces in Britain. But assumptions will have to change in the new flexible family. The woman has to face the fact that she will have to surrender things too. The only time it's difficult for me is if the children are ill or they're, they're upset. They would rather go to Neil than me and that sometimes feels uncomfortable as a mother. You know, your maternal instincts are come to your mum. but. They don't always want to, they'd rather go to Neil. And you're all right with that now? Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, sometimes it hurts a bit. Mm. Women have always given out mixed messages about sharing the home. On the one hand, they want to be liberated from it. On the other hand, when it comes to the children, they're not so keen to share. After a long journey, they came to a lovely country filled with beautiful flowers, sweet smelling air. But the gender quake is all about shifting power. And it's not just men who have to cede it. The impact of all this spreads far beyond the four walls of our individual homes. The family has traditionally run on women's self-sacrifice. So has the community. Women's volunteer labour makes up a vast unofficial add-on to the country's welfare state. For generations, many women at home did important unpaid work in the community. Things like looking after the elderly, running playgroups and PTAs, or helping out behind the counter at Oxfam. But the gender quake is taking its toll even here. Men's employment in the South East has fallen over the last 20 years. But amongst women, it's a different story. There are three quarters of a million more of them in work here. Women's lives are full to bursting these days. There simply isn't time for a bit of sainthood on the side. I'm here in Goudhurst in Kent with my clipboard and very suitable bike to try and quantify exactly who's doing the caring here and now and who might be prepared to do it in the future. I'm also going to do a costing on that work. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the voluntary work you do. Well, I help quite a bit with our local good neighbour scheme. Um, I have my own little area, which is my responsibility to cover to visit the people, and so I do spend quite a bit of time visiting my neighbours around here when they're ill or having a bad time one way or another. I lend a hand with a bit of chauffeuring for the over 60s club and for ready call, and visiting people who are housebound. The main thing is the over 60s club. Which means lots of this isn't just about charity work in a pretty village. It's vital stuff which keeps society going all over the country. There are about 18 million women doing informal, unpaid care in Britain today. But their numbers are going down. Younger women aren't coming forward. They're very busy at the moment from economic necessity or wish um, to doing paid employment for which they're well qualified uh, and they feel it would be a great waste not to use those those talents and qualifications um, and I don't know when this generation of working mothers um, reaches retirement age whether they will very easily um, slip into the idea of transferring their energies into voluntary action because uh, it won't have been part of their practice uh, for, you know, ever. Now, I've just been adding up all the hours spent on community work done by the women in Goudhurst, and it works out at 6,708 hours a year. Now, that kind of workload would need three and a half people working full time to do it. And at the current market rate, we're looking at 45,000 pounds a year. Now, 
if you multiply that by all the towns and villages in Britain, you're looking at, well, actually that's 11 billion pounds worth of work done by women for nothing. Now that's the same as a contribution made to the country's gross domestic product as the farming, forestry and fishing industries put together. So, if women can't or won't do this sort of work, then there's going to be a major hole left in the nation's economy. And community, just like the family, will never be the same. Because community feeds off family. The family feeds off women. But women are out at work. We're heading for a future which depends on the unpaid labour of the invisible woman. <laughs>